Hey, what's up guys, it's Nick2. Today I wanted to make a real quick leveling build for Rogue for Season 6 in Vessel of Hatred. Um, I don't know what to say. I think this is the best leveling build I've ever used personally. I mean, you can see on the screen just like, what is going on? <laughs> I'm just holding down right click and the second that the mob spawn, they just instantly die. And this gameplay is, by the way, without, like you would expect me to be like completely smurfing, like maxed out tempers, insane, every legendary aspect possible. No, I have like two legendary aspects scaling my damage, no tempers on my gear in this gameplay, and I'm wearing like under leveled legendaries for my level. I could not imagine how ridiculous this would be if you like went out of your way to fully min max it, but while leveling, obviously you can't really fully min max stuff. And that's why this is probably one of the best builds because I've never seen a build just be this disgustingly strong literally immediately just doing like the second that i set this up boom just doing crazy damage so i want to make a real quick video on that i've been playing the vessel of hatred expansion early uh big thanks to blizzard for that and i've been playing a whole bunch of the classes making a ridiculous amount of videos so feel free to subscribe like check out all the videos but figured i would just slap together a rogue leveling build and make a video for you guys i only have two hours left until i lose access to the servers so I didn't have time to set up the build on the actual build website, so I don't have a leveling path to follow. I'm kind of just going to explain the build to you guys, but a leveling path will be available. By the time that you guys are watching this, it'll be just like this one, just like my Necromancer one. It'll just be like this, where you can check out the leveling path and see exactly how to spend all your skill points. But I quickly just want to explain how this build actually functions and why it is so disgustingly strong for leveling, because uh, it's really, really good. The new skill, Dance of Knives, has a whole bunch of little synergies that you can take advantage of, and it just does crazy damage right out of the gate. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that I'm going to be streaming a ton over on Twitch. Would love to see more of you guys around. Feel free to swing by twitch.tv slash nick2. There's going to be some free Twitch drops, so you guys can get a lot of cosmetics if you're interested in that sort of thing. Helps me a lot if you have any questions or you just want to see me playing Spiritborn, you want to come hang out, chat, whatever, feel free. Also, there is a supporter creator thing going on. So if you gift um, two subs, you get this little mount here. And if you gift four subs, you get this mount armor. So the support means a lot. Would appreciate it immensely. Thank you guys very much. And uh, if you find the video helpful, feel free to just swing by on Twitch. All right, so let's talk about the build. Um, first off, I just want to explain why Dance of Knives is so good and how you can best take advantage of it. And then I'll kind of just explain where we spent all the skill points, go into some legendaries, tempering, stuff like that pretty standard stuff for a leveling build you could easily just refer to the um, leveling guide but i would at least try to understand one of the most core mechanics for this skill and why it is so strong and that is going to be snapshotting if you've played any game like world of warcraft or really a lot of other rpg games you should be somewhat familiar with snapshotting but for those of you that don't entirely know what snapshotting is it is essentially snapshotting a point in time of your character where it has certain buffs, and then you are taking advantage of those buffs for something that it's not usually supposed to work for. A lot of the time, buffs are dy dynamic, right? You activate a buff, let's say I activate my healing potion, gives me 10% increased damage for 4 seconds. That's supposed to only last for 4 seconds. Or for con in the uh, example of concealment, you're only supposed to get the concealment buff for the first attack that breaks concealment. But Dance of Knives, because it is a channeled skill, it's kind of 50-50 which buffs it will actually snapshot, but if I activate my concealment and then I use my Dance of Knives, because it is a channeled skill, it will now give me all the benefit of Dance of Knives for the entirety of the whole skill. And that is the same thing for Cold Imbuement as well and a whole bunch of other damage buffs that we can take advantage of in the game. So Dance of Knives, basically TLDR, you can snapshot a lot of buffs, you can get a lot of buffs on your character and then activate Dance of Knives and then throughout the whole duration of Dance of Knives, it will benefit from all of those buffs. And you could keep Dance of Knives active almost indefinitely as long as you are just moving. My character does not have very much movement speed right now and I'm very low level and I'm still able to maintain Dance of Knives with one almost 100% uptime as long as you make sure to just move like rotationally while you're actually using the skill so that you are gaining distance. Basically the way that this works is that as long as you are moving 30 meters you're going to give yourself four charges of Dance of Knives. Otherwise how Dance of Knives works is basically um, while you hold it is just going to expend charges like one per second or so and then once you run out of charges, then um, here, I'll just show you guys what that looks like. <laughs> My character's wigging out. Once you run out of charges, it just goes on a like, three second cooldown and then boom. So even if you run out of the charges, it's really not that big of a deal. You kind of just want to stay within the Dance of Knives for certain buffs like Concealment. And Concealment is insane for this because basically when you activate Concealment, the next skill 
act that you use after it is going to be guaranteed crits and make enemies vulnerable. But because Dance of Dies is a channeled skill, as you can see, every single attack is making the enemy perpetually vulnerable, and it is also 100% crit chance. So right out of the gate, you can get 100% crit chance just by using concealment. And you can gain access to like cold imbuement for the entire duration of the skill. You can see that just by activating it as cold imbued, boom, for the whole skill, it is now a cold imbued skill, which means you can take advantage of damage to frozen, etc. And because it does so many instances of damage very quickly, you can like almost immediately freeze enemies and take advantage of stuff like that. That is the gist of it. Um, Dance of Knives does not gain increased attack speed with um, attack speed. <laughs> It increases its damage actually with attack speed. So getting attack speed is kind of like a damage multiplier, but it kind of already was technically for a lot of stuff, but whatever. While it's active, you also gain increased movement speed and you gain a little bit of dodge chance as well. Nothing too crazy going on there. Otherwise, for the rest of our like skill tree and how we actually set up the build, because channel uh, Dance of Knives does not cost any energy, anything that is revolving around energy kind of uh, synergies there, we don't need. Therefore, we don't need a basic skill either. And we don't need um, combo points. Combo points just gives you extra charges, and we already have infinite charges with this, basically just by running around in circles. So combo points is completely useless. Our other options are preparation, which doesn't work because we're not spending energy, so it would just be damage reduction, or inner sight. And we don't really need inner sight because we have 100% crit chance with concealment anyways. So I'm using inner sight paired with this aspect to just give me more damage. It's pretty good for bosses. If a boss shows up, you get this 100% increased crit damage multi. And then uh, periodically we'll get this 30% multi whenever Intersight's gauge fills up. But um, I don't know. I think Blizzard should like look into the fact that with Dance of Knives, none of these really do anything. <laughs> I think Intersight needs to be reworked entirely, in my opinion. And Preparation should probably get a little bit of a rework anyways. But regardless, when it comes to the other skills, um, basic skill doesn't matter. And then we don't use any core skill. While you're starting off... I would recommend putting a few points into like flurry or something like that just to start off with until you gain access to dance of knives but once you gain dance of knives you can pretty much full send it um i grabbed some passives here uh sturdy's damage reduction siphoning strikes is healing which is really good considering we're guaranteed critting stutter step movement speed um again the leveling path will be in the description so just follow that one to a t but i'm just going to go in order of like what stuff i have actually spec here and then when it comes to Dance of Knives itself, I have this little bonus here where it has a chance to pierce enemies. The uh, stun grenade thing is really bad and it only pops when you stop channeling. And ideally you want to keep channeling the Dance of Knives um, perpetually. So this benefit here is useless. And then this is the um, enhanced thing that I was talking about where you get more charges. When it comes to other skills, um, because you're holding down right click the whole time, it almost doesn't matter. Like you can use whatever you want. Concealment is probably the only thing I would like like concealment and cold abuse, probably the only thing I'd 100% use. I have shadow step for damage reduction and for an unstoppable if you ever get crowd controlled. Uh, some damage reduction here. All of these passives are disgusting, by the way. Um, weapon mastery has always been really good. Unsable elixir is just 18% increased damage after you pop a health potion, and it makes your health potion stun enemies. And then if you stun enough enemies, you get a 36% crit damage multiplier. So that's just 36% increased damage. So by using two of these, we're getting 54% increased damage. And then if you evade for four seconds afterward, you gain 12% increased damage. I'm not sure if this evade thing snapshots with your Dance of Knives, if the damage bonus does. Um, I don't think Unstable Elixirs or Trick Attacks does, but while you're channeling Dance of Knives, you can actually press your health potion. So what, you're, what you wanna do is just while channeling Dance of Knives, and there's a large group of mobs, uh, just press your health potion so that you continuously stun them and you get the uh, increased damage benefit there. These passives are just unbelievably strong. And then uh, concealment, obviously, with the guaranteed crit and vulnerable thing. Agile for some dodge and then DR after dodging. And then I have smoke grenade here. The main reason I have smoke grenade is because I like the little arrow storm thing, kind of. Like, I like the arrow storm thing and it gives you some um, increased damage to enemies. But like most of the time you're just holding down right click so it doesn't really do very much. Uh, Malice is good for increased damage to vulnerable. Exploit is just more damage. Dark Shroud pretty much as always maxes out for damage reduction. You don't even need it on the bar. You could just have Umbris on, and that's probably better anyways because you're just holding down right click the whole time. But you don't have anything else to put on your bar that you really care about. So I don't really know. You can do whatever you want there, but maxing it out for more damage reduction is nice. Cold Imbuement, we don't need to level it because that doesn't do anything. Uh, get 20% increased damage against crowd control. 40% against frozen enemies, and um, we're always hitting crowd-controlled enemies because our Dance of Knives is applying a slow, which is pretty cool. 
and then Frigid Finesse just increased damage to frozen enemies as well. And then almost all these passives do nothing for us because we don't spend energy. So I just went into Impetus and then I have like two more skill points so I would go into Alchemist Fortune. When it comes to our key passive here, uh, Momentum is going to be our best bet probably. At some point you could consider using Victimize if you scaled enough um, vulnerable damage. But early on, Momentum gives you movement speed, uh, damage reduction, and 50% multiplicative damage increase. So it, it's pretty insane. Later on into the game, um, like I said, you might just swap to Victimize. All this other stuff is pretty weak for this build in particular. I'm honestly very surprised with how straightforward this build is. You just slap it together. And as long as you make sure to just... I just have my skills in order here. So if I just walk up to a pack of mobs, I press Smoke Grenade, Cold Immunement, Concealment, and then I just hold down right click. And then anytime I run out of Dark Shroud Shadows, I could just press my Dark Shroud. And then anytime that I, um, you know, am unstoppable or something, or sorry, need to be unstoppable, I will just press my uh, Shadow Step. And then if for whatever reason you ran out of certain buffs or you just drop your Dance of Knives, not a big deal. Just wait for your Concealment to come back up and then just do it all again. And I guess one thing is to make sure to um, press your Health Potion while you're actually in your... Um, I press... I think I pressed Concealment before I pressed Dance of Knives there, or after. Uh, just make sure that you are pressing your Health Potion while you are actually channeling so that you get that damage buff. When it comes to Legendaries, there's not a ton that are super insane. There is a Dance of Knives one, which you'll see basically um, as I press Dance of Knives, I'll have like little, little more knives come out, and that is just a whole bunch of extra damage for us. I happen to just get it on a two-hander. Ideally, you just want to put this on your amulet if you have a drop, because you don't want to keep re-imprinting on a two-hander. Um, but without that aspect, you can see my Dance of Knives just hit like just hits targets like a little bit here and there but with the aspect you can see it goes so the aspect is extremely strong gives you a whole bunch of damage there otherwise the inner sight one is pretty good like i mentioned just some crit damage there and then um i got this i like the arrow storm stuff just because i think it looks cool so and it really helps with boss damage like look how much damage this is if you just spawn a whole bunch of arrow storms I really just think it looks cool. It's probably like functionally not that insane because it isn't scaling the damage of your Dance of Knives, which is the majority of your damage, uh, mainly this aspect and Dance of Knives itself. But I think it looks cool. <laughs> There's not too much else to really increase your damage. Like you could go with Edge Masters for just straight up damage. Um, there's some like smoke and sun grenade stuff. I'll have it in the build link, so don't worry too much about it, but I would just go out of your way to try to get the Dance of Knives one. And then the Aerostorm stuff is pretty nice for leveling. There is one aspect that increases, like when you break stealth, it drops a smoke grenade, but you're not gonna break stealth more than once every like 30 seconds. So that isn't really all that good. Not a smoke grenade, drops a stun grenade. Um, other aspects, Umbrus is always pretty nice to so just get that free Dark Drought Shadows. Um, this one is pretty good to so just give you more damage reduction with your Dark Shrouds. And then you just want to get like, you know, armor with Disobedience and try to max out your resistances. When it comes to stats on gear, same thing, try to max out your resistances. I barely even touched this character because I was just literally one-shotting everything that I was fighting. So I didn't worry too much about my gear. I Like, like you can see, I don't even have any defensive tempers and I don't have um, offensive tempers on a lot of gear. Uh, just go for armor. Max HP, Dexterity, Resistances, and then straight up go for like um, crit chance doesn't matter. Crit damage is really good because you're always critting. So really look out for crit damage or just straight up damage or damage to close. And that's probably what I would recommend tempering. Actually, you want to temper uh, damage per Dark Shroud Shadow if you happen to get that because that is disgusting. God, I couldn't even imagine how much damage I'd be doing if I had that temper on right now because that temper is like... 500% additive or something like super super early on on your weapon you can temper chance for dance of knives projectiles to cast twice but that is likely just worse than getting um damage per dark shroud shadow because a lot of the damage is actually from this aspect but i guess that would make the aspect hit more so if you get like an ancestral weapon or whatever um you'd want to go dance of knives temper plus damage per dark shroud shadow otherwise like i said crit damage damage and damage to close is pretty good and focus on your resistances uh, that's pretty much it. There's going to be a seasonal power mechanic, which I don't have access to. But once I do, I will update the leveling build with what you should be um, trying to use. And when it comes to runes, not 100% sure yet because a lot of that stuff is being changed. But I will just have that in the build link. So definitely reference that. This is one of the best builds I've ever used. Have fun. Very, very strong. And I'm pretty sure you could take it into endgame without any issues at all either. Thanks for watching. Hope you, you found the video helpful. Uh, feel free to follow me over on Twitch. And... Make sure to favorite the build on Mobilytics, that sort of thing. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.